While I was away last week, there was a scandal regarding Donald Trump that I think is so serious that it should end his presidency. Like, if this were a functioning democracy and a normal world where there were consequences for the actions of a lawmaker who is either incompetent or doing something to harm people actively, this would have ended his presidency. Not just his campaign, but his presidency. But because there is no accountability in D.C., um, I'm sure that nothing will come of this, but I'm referring, of course, to the Bob Woodward tapes where Donald Trump spoke to him in February and he told him about how serious COVID-19 was, that he knew at that time that it was even airborne in certain cases indoors. Now, we all know that he's been downplaying it this entire time. So for him to know that, Having known that he knew how serious this was and him not acting when we're approaching 200,000 deaths due to COVID-19, this is criminal negligence at a minimum. So I'm sure everyone has heard this by now, but if not, this is uh, what was released from an interview with Bob Woodward, where he not only knew about COVID-19 severity, but then he admitted that he tried to downplay it because... He didn't want to cause a panic. And so what was uh, President Xi saying yesterday? Well, we were talking mostly about the uh, the virus. And I think he's going to have it in good shape. But, you know, it's a very tricky situation. It's uh, Indeed it, goes, it, it goes through air, Bob. That's always tougher than the touch. You know, the touch, you don't have to touch things, right? But the air, you just breathe the air. That's how it's uh, passed. And so that's a very tricky one. That's a very delicate one. Uh, it's also more deadly than your, you know, your even your strenuous flus. You know, people don't realize we lose 25,000, 30,000 people a year here. Who, who would ever think that, right? I know. It's I mean, much it's pretty forgotten. amazing. And um, then I say, well, is that the same thing? For, this is uh, more right. deadly. This is five per... You know, this is 5% versus 1% and less than 1%. You know, so this is deadly stuff. John, I, I just want all of us to remember, we are used to the virus now, as used as you can be. But if you go back to the beginning of February, the American public, we thought this was a problem in China. The notion of it being airborne, 5% uh, more deadly. These are very specific details that the president had in the very same time period that he is saying it's all going to go away. Right. That's February 7th. You just played that piece February of the conversation. 7th. He talks about how deadly it is. He said two weeks later, 20 days later in India, it's a problem that's going to go away. And within a couple of days, it's going to be down to zero. The president telling Woodward one thing, telling the American people and the world something very different. But you. The interesting part is the president makes no bones about it, that he was doing this on purpose, that he decided as a strategy not to convey the seriousness of this because he didn't want to, quote, incite a panic? Correct. So Woodward does another interview, uh, March 19th. We also have the audio of that. Again, the president in his own words. And just to set this up, remember, he has been publicly minimizing the threat to young people. Not a problem for young people. He still minimizes uh, the threat to young people. So he addresses that, and then uh, you'll hear he admits that he's not sharing everything he knows. Now it's turning out it's not just old people, Bob, but just today and, and yesterday. Some uh, startling facts came out. It's not just old, older yeah, exactly. young people to plenty of young people. So you, what's going on give in me an, a, a moment of talking to somebody, going through this with Fauci or somebody who kind of uh, it caused a pivot in your mind because it's clear just from what's in on the public record that you went through a pivot on this to, oh my God, the gravity is uh, almost inexplicable and unexplainable. Well, I think, Bob, really, to be honest with you, sure, I want you to. I be. wanted to, uh, I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down. Yes, sir. Because I don't want to create a panic. Yeah, this should end his presidency. Every single person should be furious listening to him.
talk about how severe COVID-19 was back in February. Because he bungled it. He knew how severe it was, and he didn't act accordingly to stop it. And now 200,000 Americans are dead on his watch. 200,000 Americans. Every single year, we have a memorial for 9-11 where 3,000 Americans died. But 200,000 Americans are dead on his watch, and this president is possibly going to get reelected. I mean, the polls don't show that he's in a good position, but he should be resigning. Like, there should be so much pressure on him to resign that it's overwhelming. And I'm not saying I want Mike Pence to be president, but 200,000 deaths. There's got to be some accountability. And the fact that there's not shows you how broken our political system is. This is criminal negligence at a minimum. At a minimum. And I don't care if you're a Trump supporter or, you know, I don't care who you are. Like, this is not political. 200,000 Americans have died. And had he acted sooner and more competently, he could have saved thousands of lives. So the fact that his own supporters are letting him get away with this, when we know they wouldn't let Obama get away with the same thing, it shows you that this is a cult. If you support Donald Trump till this day, you are anti-American. You are in a cult. You are brainwashed. Now, Joe Biden's response to this actually was pretty spot on. He says that this is basically... um criminal, possibly. And I'm glad he said that. But Trump's response to um, Joe Biden saying that this was possibly criminally negligent was no you. That's what he said in an interview with Janine Pirro when she asked him about the Bob Woodward tapes. Joe Biden has indicated after the uh, uh, Woodward information came out that your handling of the coronavirus and th that situation was not only despicable, but it's almost criminal. What do you say to Joe Biden? Well, I think a statement like that is criminal because we did a much better job than he could ever have done. As you know, he was months later before he even thought the ban was a good thing, and ultimately he had to apologize for what he did. We would have lost hundreds of thousands of lives. And what I said to Woodward was actually good. I said, calm, we need calm. We don't need panic. Mm -hmm. uh, they want me to jump up and down and start screaming, is everyone going to die? Is everyone going to That's not what leadership is about. I'm a cheerleader for the country. We need calm. That's all I've said. And by the way, that was done after. That was done after I had already banned China right. from coming into the country. That was in February. So you did I the ban January 31st. Yeah. So, Janine, I took tremendous steps. Everybody knew how I feel. Otherwise, I wouldn't be banning China. And then shortly thereafter, I banned Europe. We saved hundreds of thousands of lives with each one of those bans and saved probably two or two and a half million lives by doing what we did early. Mr. President, Joe Biden says that your response to this was criminal. What do you say to that? Uh, I think that him saying that I was criminal is criminal. No, you. Any statement is not criminal because we have something called the First Amendment, which Donald Trump doesn't like in spite of him claiming that he supports the First Amendment. But what a laughable response. Joe Biden is right. Your response was criminal. And your excuse of, oh, I didn't want to cause a panic is bullshit. Your entire presidency is fear-mongering and an attempt to cause a panic so that way people are afraid and they think that Republicans will protect them. I mean, you want us to panic over Black Lives Matter and Antifa and everything else, but you didn't want us to panic over something that actually ended up killing 200,000 Americans? I don't buy it. I don't buy it. And basically, he defends himself by referencing the travel ban from China. But here's the thing. You don't get to use that as a defense because had you not downplayed the severity of the virus, maybe more people would have actually understood your reasoning for the ban in the first place and not just thought that at the time you were using coronavirus as an excuse to be more xenophobic and institute more xenophobic policies after you've spent years doing just that, fear-mongering about immigrants and migrant caravans from Latin America. I mean, everything you do has been an attempt to cause fear and hysteria. You literally instituted a Muslim ban from certain countries. So, I mean, had you actually been upfront with the American people and explained to us how severe this was, maybe people wouldn't have thought that you were being xenophobic. If you explained, look, I know that you all think that I'm xenophobic, but we really need a travel ban from everywhere because this is super serious. Maybe people would have understood it, but you told us there was nothing to worry about. So when you say there's nothing to worry about, but we need a travel ban, is it really preposterous to think that you're just using this as an excuse to be more xenophobic? Of course it isn't. So, I mean, that's not an excuse. Like you saying I wanted a travel ban is not an excuse. We needed to shut down the fucking country, shut down the economy institute a nationwide 
face mask mandate, which you still won't do, but you didn't do it. And 200,000 Americans died. And now you're insulted that people are saying that what you did was criminally negligent. You are the leader of the country. Of course, what you did was negligent at a minimum. So, I mean, this really should end his presidency. He should be resigning. Like, there should be at least pressure on him to resign. But the fact that he's not even experiencing a modicum of pressure shows you how fucked up and dysfunctional our country is. If a president can bungle a pandemic so bad that it leads to 200,000 Americans dying, and he's not even concerned about people calling on him to step down, it shows you that our government fundamentally is broken. Because any leader that sees 200,000 of their own citizens dead on under their watch, that leader should be fearing for their ass, fearing that people aren't going to demand that he leave immediately and drag him out of the White House. It's just honestly baffling to me. And Bob Woodward, on another note, to hang on to these tapes, sit on them for so long, just because you want to sell a book, that's really fucked up because this is information that the public needed to know. But because you wanted to sell your book and you wanted to release this at the correct time that was convenient for you, I mean, that's another aspect of the story. But I mean, everyone should just be mad that the president knew how severe COVID-19 was and he intentionally lied to us. And now 200,000 Americans died as a result when if he actually acted competently and told us how serious it was, maybe more people would have survived. He's a piece of shit. And anyone who defends him at this point is uh, delusional. <laughs> That's the nicest way I can put it. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay?